Hello and welcome. Greek great Aristotle had said that poverty is a parent of revolution and crime. Mario Puzo in his epic Godfather had said that behind every successful fortune there is crime. If one views both of these together and analyzes, they don't seem to be contradictory. In fact, they seem to be representing the two ends of a spectrum between which crime has thrived for time immemorial, since the times when there were no crime laws to define what was crime. Welcome to this English avatar of Crime Tuck. A Hindi version is run by my colleague Shams Tahir Khan, immensely popular, extremely well-researched, diverse, and that is why very popular. I have been a political journalist for over three decades, and that is why I know a thing or two about crimes which are parented by politicians or politics. And for the debut episode of English version of Crime Tuck, I have picked up an incident that happened 30 years ago, a little over that. And it involved crimes against people, crimes against the state, and also crime against democracy. I will rewind to February 1990. I was a cub reporter, barely four years old in this profession, and working with the first private TV news venture, path-breaking news track. Uh, it was news packaged in a video cassette. At that time, it was VHS. And it was again a pioneering effort by who else but the India Today group. The incident made global headlines. Many people were killed. There were political killings. It was called Mayhem in Mayhem. A small assembly constituency in Rota district in Haryana, very close to Delhi. It was parented by politics of Lutian's Delhi, where I sit. Riding an extremely persuasive campaign on the Beaufort scandal, uh, VP Singh had become Prime Minister and his deputy was Devi Lal, the Jat Lord of Haryana. He had shifted base uh, sometime in December 1989 to Delhi to take charge as the Deputy Prime Minister of a coalition which even involved the BJP. Uh, and at that time, in a dynastic switch, he had made Om Prakash Chautala his son as the Chief Minister of Haryana. Om Prakash Chautala took over in, uh, on 2nd December 1990, but he was not a member of any of the houses. So he had to get elected as per the rules uh, within the next uh, six months. Chautala wanted uh, to contest from the Mayhem constituency. That was his father's home turf. But at that time, since Devilal had moved to Delhi, the powerful super panchayat called the Mayhem Chobisi had uh, decided that Anand Singh Dangi, who was the chairman of the Haryana Service Selection Board at that time, would be their choice. In fact, nearly 2,000 odd uh, leaders from the Chobisi landed up at Devilal's home in Delhi and conveyed the decision to him that it's not going to be Chotala, it is going to be uh, Anand Singh Dagi, who is going to be their chosen one. But Devi Lal wanted his son and his son to take charge of Haryana. And he f uh, followed the call of the heart, the line of the blood, and did not follow the diktat of the clan. And that is why Anand Singh Dagi entered the fall fray against Om Prakash Chautala as an independent rebel candidate. The election commission fixed the date for 27th of February. Before the election date, there was tremendous amount of friction between the cadres, the administration and others. Come poll day, I was a young reporter. It was a bipole. Uh, not very significant, although the sitting chief minister was contesting to remain chief minister. I, along with a team of comprising of three members at that time, it used to be called a low band recording uh, system. We landed up in Beham. And in the morning, we, uh, when we reached there, the atmosphere was terribly surcharged. 
There was friction between carders almost everywhere. There were policemen who was trying to stop the carders from flocking around the polling booths. By the time it was 11 o'clock in the afternoon, we found that things were getting out of control. Things were getting out of control not because there were mobs, because the police was behaving in a partisan manner. After all, the chief minister had to get elected, so the police knew what exactly they had to do. So at many places, there were complaints by Anand Singh Dagi faction that the police was stopping uh, the voters from entering polling booths. They were intimidating voters. There were complaints even that policemen were forcing uh, voters inside polling stations that they should not be voting for Anand Singh Dangi. Uh, we heard a lot of complaints at several places we reached. We shot uh, places where there were friction happening. Uh, at places we found there were fisticuffs. There were lati charged by policemen. And uh, throughout the day, there were complaints of rigging uh, at polling stations, polling officials being intimidated, they're being chased out ballot papers and ballot boxes. Yes, those were the days when ballot boxes were still used for polling. And uh, there was snatching of polling boxes happening. By the time the evening uh, came and dusk fell, there was a very clear indication that there has been large-scale tempering as far as the voting system has been concerned. The election commission in a late evening meeting took a call and decided that in uh, two segments, especially one segment called the Bensi area, uh, where in the Mayhem constituency, there has been a lot of rigging and uh, poll, poll malpractice. And that is why a re-poll in eight polling booths was ordered in, within the Mayhem constituency. Now, uh, a countermanded uh, election perhaps is more interesting, but re-polling in eight polling stations uh, does not really make news. So, it was just gut feeling, perhaps uh, a young reporter's enthusiasm to be part of the polling process, even though there not, may not be something very significant happening there. I landed up, but this time around, perhaps acting on a hunch, I took two camera teams with me. That means it was a seven-member team. There were two cameramen with me who are uh, today in the market as one of the most senior cameramen, Ajmal Jami and Narendra Gudavali with me, and there were other news track uh, teams with me. When we landed at uh, uh, Mayhem, we went straight for the Bensi, uh, the polling booths in the Bensi area. It was sometime around uh, 9 o'clock when we were stopped outside a polling station. There was a large police posse. The policemen did not allow us to enter, and they held us at bay. Suddenly, two men came running out of the polling station. And their charge was that they were polling agents and they have been chased out because certain officials have entered inside and they were sitting inside while the polling agents, uh, polling officials were being made to stand as bystanders. And these officials were stamping ballot papers and dumping them inside the ballot boxes. We got them on camera. We got them on camera and then we were chased away because we were shooting incriminating evidence uh, at the polling station by the policemen. We landed up at another polling station. This time, there was, no, uh, there was a small gathering of policemen outside and it was virtually desolate. There were no voters and uh, there was not even a curious onlooker in that area. There were several police vehicles parked outside and we peeped inside from the window and we actually saw uh, that uh, there were few officials inside. The polling officials were sitting in the corner on their hunches and uh, one by one, ballot papers were being stamped and they were being dumped inside the ballot boxes. We filmed it. We filmed it and then we made good escape from there without anybody noticing us. Suddenly, we were standing at a uh, at a crossing in uh, the Bansi uh, area, when someone came us and told us that there was violence happening inside the village. So leaving one camera team outside, I went inside the village and uh, I found that on a, a charpai, as it is called in the area, a cot, there was the mortal remains of a person. A person was lying dead, flies all over him. 
Uh, he was bleeding uh, from all, all over his body. He had injuries on his head. Uh, one of his eyes was virtually gorged out. He had stab wounds in his stomach. And uh, there were some family members who were crying around him. So when we asked him what had happened, uh, uh, we were told that uh, there was a clash between Anand Singh Dangi men and Chotala men. And allegedly, this is what the family members alleged, that Chotala men had used uh, jaili. It's a, it's a farm implement. It's like a pitchfork. While a pitchfork has three to four uh, sharp edges on one end, at the functioning end of the pitchfork, jaili has two. It's used to raise haystack hay when uh, the thrashing process is on. It's a sharp weapon and it's, uh, it can be used as a weapon to kill. And that's the first time I realized it. And I found that this person was stabbed multiple times in his stomach, abdomen and chest with jellies and was beaten with lattes and there were uh, telltale injuries on his head. While we were filming it, suddenly we heard a commotion, barely 400 meters away. And uh, we turned and I yanked Naren Guravali, who was my cameraman, to catch the action. We found that a man was chased by nearly 10 to 15 men. He fell and then those men who were chasing him rained lati blows on him. They kept hitting him. They kept hitting him. He kept screaming. He kept shouting for help. Nobody, there were, there were some people who were watching from a distance and nobody moved. Barring that those people who were hitting him and the person who was being beaten. Suddenly, three, four men came and jellies in their hands and they started hitting him with jellies in his stomach, in his, on his face, all over his body. Soon that person was uh, virtually immobile. And then we asked the curious onlookers that who was this man? We were told that this was the other side retaliating, means it was allegedly the Dangi men, this time around, retaliating for the killing and killing the man who belonged to the Chotala camp. While this commotion was on, there was one dead body on this side, 400 meters, another dead body with men with lattes and pitchforks still standing around them. We found, we heard the screeching sound of few vehicles. And there were nearly eight and nine of them. And a lot of men came out. There were a couple of escorting policemen with them. And two powerful, uh, important looking men came out with uh, gunmen. And they started indiscriminately firing. One of the men fell. One of the men who was standing and hitting that man with lattes fell. These men then rushed towards that, that group of men, firing, continuously firing at them. We were filming it, but suddenly three, four policemen came and stopped us, pushed us and pinned us. In fact, uh, snatched one of the cameras. And then we continued hearing firing. From a distance, we could see two more people fall, one man. We found that a girl, young girl who was standing at the door of a house with a mother screaming for uh, asking her to come inside. One of the bullets hit her and it is then that uh, the bullets fell silent. And then that group of men which had run in with the bullets, they turned back towards us. We were, we were, we were unwanted. And at that time we used the, perhaps the, not, the lax policemen and the lack of attention on us to slip away. We got in our car. And they went to another area in Bensi, uh, this uh, Bensi constituency area. And there on the main road, we found that several shops were on fire. And there was a large posse of nearly 200 odd policemen, which was firing in the air, which was firing on people. And we saw that two people died in that firing. And we even saw that uh, one of the men was lifted by the policemen and thrown into one of the burning shops. 
we were intent on shooting what was happening at that time. All of us were young. We hadn't seen something as, as gory and as murderous as this. While we were intent on shooting it, I suddenly saw from the corner of my eyes nearly 20 to 25 policemen rushing towards us. And I, since I was covering crime already, from the epaulets on his uh, shoulder, I could realize it was a sub-inspector. He came shouting, hurling abusers as us. And uh, I took out my proudly owned press card to show him that we were media people. But in chast Haryanvi, he abused us. And he said that, why the hell are we there? And he asked us to surrender our camera and footage. Now, that's a no-no for a journalist. So, I insisted that that's not all going to happen. In the meanwhile, he gestured to his policemen who started uh, snatching the camera, attempting to snatch the camera from Ajmal Jami, my cameraman. There was Jagmohan, our sound recordist, and there was Pradeep Gupta, one of our other uh, light assistant. They were trying to ensure that the camera is not snatched. It is then I rushed towards them and I uh, stood between the policemen and the camera team. And then one of the policemen, I think, at the orders of the sub-inspector, because there was a lot of screaming and shouting going on, I couldn't hear, hit the first blow on my head. So he hit his lati on the right side of my head and I could instantly feel that there was blood coming out of it. And then hell broke loose. Twenty of them pounced on us, raining lattes, and they started hitting Jami, my cameraman, and the camera fell. The camera used to be not a single component unit at that time. It used to have a camera and a recorder connected to it. The recorder also fell. And there were raining blows on the camera then. The idea was to finish off the footage. But in the policeman's zeal, they didn't know that those recorders were built like a tank. And I realized that perhaps it's the end of the camera and the recorder, but perhaps the tape could be salvaged. And uh, I turned and I fell over the recorder. And I pushed the eject button. I took out the tape and while they were hitting me, I hid it inside my jacket. And suddenly, another one policeman who was carrying a rifle, a 303 in his hand, and in Haryanvi said, he started in a tape card liye. That means he has taken the tape out. And he hit me, he reversed his rifle and he hit me on the other side of my head. Uh, by that time, beaten and bruised, uh, Badri, my sound recordist, uh, Jagmohan, uh, Ajmal Jami were chased out from there. The camera was in ruins, completely shattered. And I started also start with a tape tucked under my armpit, inside the jacket. I started running. Nearly 10 of them started chasing me. But I was 26 then, fitter, younger, and I outran them. All of us ran for nearly one and a half kilometers. There were people, people from homes, scared to even lend a helping hand or even challenge what the police was doing. Such was the reign of terror on that day, February 28th, 1990. Our driver was a brave man. And he realized there was something happening. He had come close and he saw what was happening. He zoomed in his car. We opened the doors and uh, we got inside somehow. And the driver turned the vehicle and it started speeding away. But Delhi was on this side. We were on the other side, heading into Rohtak and in deeper into Haryana. It did not end there. Policemen chased us. They got a jeep and they started chasing us. Uh, I had two serious head injuries. My Badri, my camera, my sound recorders had injuries on his head. Uh, Jami, my cameraman, had bruises all over. But he could, he was, I think he was the sharpest and most alert among us at that time. And he told us that it seems that they were firing on us. We drove like mad. There was, after nearly driving for a couple of kilometers, when we were reaching the end of the uh, Mayhem constituency, 
there was a police picket there was a police jeep few policemen and few drums which were stationed on the road and we realized that they may stop us but we perhaps the wireless system was not as good at that time perhaps the police was too keen on getting us at that time they had not alerted the policemen at the picket and the barricade and we somehow managed to zoom past we didn't know where we were going i was young and it was my first trip to haryana as a journalist the driver also was not very familiar with the area we drove we just kept on driving uh, with a jeep chasing us we drove i don't know i don't recall how long suddenly we saw that on the right there was a board indicating something about an army cantonment or a army unit uh, on the right we turned into that i i told the driver to turn towards the right hoping that if there is an army cantonment perhaps perhaps we might uh, escape those who were chasing us it was a dilapidated old ambassador car and perhaps i think strongly built that we managed to somehow reach a point where there was activity there were certain vehicles and then we realized that the uh, van the police jeep had stopped chasing us we turned back and we didn't know what to do because if we had to get back to delhi we had to cross mayhem and we knew that the cops would be looking for us we had that valuable put- uh, footage still tucked inside my jacket under my armpit so we started driving ag- away from delhi towards some place we came to a small kasba we went found a small hospital and we went inside and looking for first aid but by that time everybody had realized that we were victims of poll violence perhaps even police and the doctors there at the hospital refused to give us first aid there was fear written all over disappointed we left that place and we drove suddenly we had driven few kilometers and i saw a a a, a vehicle station with a red cross uh, that red cross painted on the sides so i asked the driver was it a doctor was it an um, emergency van so he told us that it is part of that maternity uh, apparatus in haryana where if there is a home delivery for a pregnant lady uh, these vehicles come with the doctor and an attendant and they uh, have the delivery inside uh, at the village in case of an emergency we went inside uh, there was a baby child which was born newborn child the doctor just was uh, had washed her hands was wiping her hands in a towel she saw us she uh, was sympathetic and i think she came over the all the fears and she was nice enough to agree to give us stitches on our head and first aid but she had a problem she had a problem medical services were not as good at that time she did not have anesthesia to administer those uh stitches on our sutures on our head and uh, my camera my sound recorder is badri's head so there was a choice of bleeding longer we were already bleeding for some 2 3 3 4 hours or uh, getting stitches without uh, anesthesia she said i'll i'll do it softly i took a word and she gave me 17 stitches and nearly 7 8 stitches to my sound record is badri the locals were very helpful they gave me a glass full of warm milk laced with the turmeric and the local uh, old gentleman who was i think 70 75 told me that this is the best they can do and it will really help us it did it really helped us we gained energy we drove somehow and we started approaching uh, delhi from the other border we drove drove through a long time and we somehow crossed the border there were checks but we put on uh, some caps which we had bought not to show the bandages on head we stuck the tapes inside the rear seat there were used to be springs in those we hid the tapes there we crossed the border and we called up our office news track office and uh, we reached office well past midnight there was a large posse of media men we told them the story of what had transpired there were two other journalists we found later who were beaten up there 
we were told next morning that officially 10 people had died. Our cameras were written off. But locals say that 24 people had died on both the sides. Now, despite all that accident, incident, since Devilal was, Devilal was the Deputy Prime Minister, the government could not move in because it was a question of his son continuing as Chief Minister. And news track became her household name that day, next morning. It was perhaps the first poll violence story, violence during a poll captured on camera, away from those days of Doordarshan news. And people of India saw for the first time that if they heard about poll violence, it is this is how it happens. If they heard of polling uh, ballot papers being snatched, this is how it happens. If they'd heard about powerful men in politics dictating and subverting mandate of the people, this is how it happens. Uh, the election was countermanded because of the violence that they happened and the incriminating evidence that India Today had. India Today had to face the wrath of the administration. India Today's publication house is in Haryana, was in Haryana. The local goons harassed us. Uh, the press, the printing had to be stopped for certain days. There was virtually no probe. Media men, public pressure, editorials were written. And eventually, the Home Minister uh, met journalists and others and there were demands that something needs to be done. A uh, sitting judge of the High Court, Haryana, Punjab and Haryana, was appointed and uh, an inquiry was ordered. Uh, but Chotala continued as Chief Minister for a little while. Then came, this is not the end of the Mayhem story. This is not the end of the violence for ensuring that Chotala remained Chief Minister. There was another election called and because Chotala had to be elected, and this time around, Chotala still wanted to continue from Mayhem. So a dummy candidate was fielded by Chotala's party. And Amar Singh, if the election was to held on May 21st, if I recall rightly, 1990, on 16th May, Amar Singh, the candidate, was killed. And in reprisal, the police raided the Madina home of Anand Singh Dagi, the candidate who had contested against Chotala, in uh, mayhem and there was firing again there were three people killed again there was bro there was a lot of political din raised and another inquiry was ordered but eventually the matter came to the cbi for years the cbi probed the matter the narsimha rao government came to power in 1991 there were judicial inquiries again but by the end of it cbi could not incriminate uh, find evidence to prosecute those accused in the case. The policemen, the DIG, the officials, they could not find evidence. The court inquiries first could not find anything. Bhajan Lal, who became chief minister after Om Prakash Chautala, scrapped that inquiry, rejected it, founded another inquiry, but that also didn't bring up anything. Eventually, eventually, what happened on 27th of February and 28th of February 1990, when people were killed, democracy was subverted and undermined. There was no prosecution. But, but, though Mario Puzo may have said that behind successful ventures, there is crime, Chotala didn't last very long. He had to resign. And that perhaps is because of the footage India Today has secured. It had brought to people what transpired on those two days in Mayhem in Haryana. That's the story of Mayhem in Mayhem. We'll be back with more. We'll be back with more. More story where parent of crime is politics and politicians. Have a nice weekend.